Fun with Failure. Hi, welcome to Fun with Failure. This is Dallas. I found a new series I'd like to share with you. I'm just going to read some of the short stories and see if you like them. Leave your thoughts down in the comments. I thought it was hilarious, so I'm going to read a few that I really liked. It's called Malicious Compliance, so I hope you enjoy. Without further ado, here we go. This happened to a friend of mine in high school. He was taking a test in algebra and he didn't realize that all the equations used y is a variable instead of x. He did all the problems correctly, but he got points off because he wrote x instead of y. The teacher said, had he put a note at the top that said, let y equal x, he would have given him full marks. But because he didn't, he lost points. The next test came around and again, all the problems used y instead of x. This time, at the top of his test, he wrote, let y equal fish. A small sketch of a fish, not the word written out. He then substituted all instances of y for a sketch of a fish in all of the problems. He got a perfect score this time, along with a note from the teacher. He said that he made his point and to not do it again. I make sub sandwiches at a certain fast food restaurant. Well, at that job, we had a regular. If you were new, she'd tell you her real name, but we all knew her as Bitchabelle. Catchy, right? She always ordered the same thing. Two six inch subs that were exactly the same with ham. She was super particular about everything. Every piece of ham had to be straight and even, and if one was a centimeter off, she would insist that you straighten it. My manager, the smart one, would continually say, it's fine, and move the sandwich along. But I wanted to be the best dang sandwich artist ever. So to do that, I complied with her every demand, even asked her questions along the way. For the most part, it went like this. The third one is off, can you just... This one? Pointed to the second from the left. No, the other one. This one? No, over. This one? Yes, it's just off. So I turn it, 90 degrees. Is that better, ma'am? No! And it went on for like two minutes, five minutes. Finally, about 10 minutes later, she's content. Now, ma'am, what kind of cheese would you like? It took me so long to make that order that three other people had been served around her by the time that we were done by my coworker. And of course, she had my full attention. I don't think I ever saw her again after that, but I almost wish I had. I love wasting time when being paid for it. I was in ninth grade when I ran into a substitute teacher who told us in class that if I catch you passing notes, I will make sure to read them out loud for the rest of the class so everyone knows what's so important. I pass a note to my friend. I was caught. She started, but she didn't finish reading it. This is what I wrote. I like chicken. I like liver. Meow mix, meow mix, please deliver. Followed by a crap ton of meows. I was about four years old in kinder care preschool. One of the teachers sent us to eat lunch. Normally, this wasn't a problem, but this particular day, they were serving cheese broccoli, which they just dished out on our plate lunch line style. Like any other four-year-old, I hated even the scent of broccoli, and I recall refusing to eat it, knowing what would happen if I did. This old teacher came up to me and demanded that I finish everything, including the broccoli. I'll throw up, I told her. You better eat it, she replied. I fired back. I know I'll throw up, I insisted. I never forgot what she said next. You're gonna eat that or I'm gonna take you to the bathroom and pull down your pants and give you a spanking. This was the early 80s when teachers could actually do that. This was her mistake. In my first act of real defiance, I said very clearly, Okay. I then took two of the biggest bites that I could. And of course, I didn't make the third bite. It was an immediate gag reflex, and I spewed the rest of the entire lunch all over her legs and shoes, like, a lot. I had very violent vomits, and I still do. I retched for a good two or three minutes afterwards. She never demanded that I do that again. My mom, when she heard about the news, she said something to the effect of not being surprised. I worked at a veterinary clinic as a receptionist for four years. 
During the first few weeks or months, I rapidly came to realize that the doctor owner of this practice had a bloated ego. He was extremely demanding of his staff and not very polite about it. Here's my story. One afternoon, I received a call from a client asking to come in for a routine, non-critical appointment later on that evening. Checking the schedule, I saw that one of our bigger dogs was due to come in. He took a long time to do and that the doctor's schedule had been blocked off for an hour to compensate. I politely redirected the client to a different day, which turned out to work better for her. And I concluded the call. I was pleased that I helped save the doctor some trouble. No sooner did I hang up the phone than he called me to a nearby office. He had overheard the conversation, and he was livid. He proceeded to tear into me about the fact that I should have scheduled the appointment anyway because he didn't mind being double booked, and because so far, we only had one appointment that night. I don't care if you double book me. You double book me every day. You can triple book me for all that I care. If someone wants to come in on a day that we're slammed, it doesn't matter. Get the monkey off your back and cut this out. It's worth mentioning that this was the first and only time I have ever actually suggested to the client that they come in on a different day due to scheduling conflicts. It wasn't like this was an ongoing problem and certainly didn't warrant such a ferocious reprimand. Oh, so triple bookie you say? Very well. The weekend was the busiest, craziest time for any animal hospital. You bet your butt I quadruple booked him for that next Saturday. He called me that morning, it was my day off, and he sheepishly told me that I'm good, but not that good. He never questioned my scheduling decisions again. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. I really love to add this into the rotation. It's really fun and I really enjoy some of the stories. These were some of the shorter stories that I found. I didn't want to read the longer stories if you guys didn't like it. Give me your thoughts down in the comments. Well, this is just an extra I wanted to throw out there. So until next time, have a good one and I will see you again soon.